All right, today's video is a couple of chores around the house. Uh, I'm going to sharpen some lawnmower blades. So, when my boys were young and my daughter, we had a lawn business. And, you know, we mowed 15, 20 lawns a week. And when they got a little older and started getting regular jobs, they, uh, I kind of gave up my mowing business with the exception of a guy that I grew up across the street from. I've talked about him before, Dusty and Vicky. And I still mow their lawns, but now I have two grandsons that are 12 and 13 years old, and I'm back in the lawn mowing business. And we have five or six accounts right now you know they make forty to sixty dollars a week uh, I give them all the money I take I take a little bit for gas but they get most of the money and as they get older and want to take on more responsibility I guess we'll grow the business a little bit but uh, I'm going to sharpen some lawn bits, some lawnmower blades today. I'm going to sharpen, going to build a platform for the, for the furnace. And I'm also going to work on uh, the fifth wheel. So take you along for all that. But let's uh, sharpen some lawnmower blades. I'll show you how I do it. I don't know if you can see my bench grinder there, but what you want to do is just put an edge on it and then I'll show you how to balance them. This is off a snapper lawn, well no this is off a, uh, a tor uh, snapper craftsman, this is off a craftsman. This is off a snapper. So let's fire it up. Show you what I do.
looks pretty sharp. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I balance a lawnmower blade. So here's my vise. You can use a screw or a nail or whatever you want to do. And you set the you set the blade on there and then you watch what it does. So that's pretty good. I mean, it's not going heavy one way or heavy the other. So I'd say that blade there is pretty well balanced. We did a pretty good job of grinding it evenly. Okay, let's grab this other one. This is the uh, Craftsman blade. Same thing. It, uh, it's not falling down one way. You push down on one side or the other. You know and it uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't fall off one way or the other so that blades pretty well balanced so you know if my grandson asked me says grandpa why don't you just buy brand new blades they're already sharpened and I says well because a new blades twenty five dollars I can sharpen these for free <laughs> so <laughs> That's what we do is I'm sharpening these for free. I've got two more lawnmowers to do out there, but I just thought I'd show you these two. Uh, the other way of doing it's with a file. Uh, let me see if I can find a file. Uh, that's how I did them for uh, years and years before I got a uh, bench grinder was uh, with just a good old file. So, let me show you how that works. So, when you're filing, uh, this is the cutting edge. This is the cutting edge. So, let me, let me set you down here and put this in the vise. And you don't need a vise either. I didn't have one of those for a long time. So, let's see what you can see there. So you put it in the vise, and then you want to go towards, you want to go this direction towards the, uh, the back side of the blade. You don't want to go, if you go this way, you'll end up rounding this edge over. So if you go into it, into the cutting blade, you don't put a, uh, you don't put a, uh, you don't round this edge off, and that you can get that, you can get that razor sharp. Just going into it, and then same way you might want to back cut it a little bit. But you want to go towards, you want to go towards it. Let me flip this one. See, this would be the opposite of what you want to do this way. Uh, you don't want to go this way. That's going with the cutting edge. And that's when you're going to round over this side. So we'll flip it over and I'll just, because I want to take the same amount off each side. Okay, and I like to come up higher on the shoulder here and kind of sharpen that too. This one only has the first two inches. Uh, the snapper blade has a little bit more, but I like to come up a little higher. You know, it's going it be hitting the grass too. And uh, if we take and put the nail back in, or the screw, then we can check to see if it's how I affected the balance.
no matter where you put it, it kind of stays. So, not real critical, but you know, it does help to balance them. So, that's my uh, sharpening the lawnmower blades. They actually make a deal, I've seen them on late night infomercials, where uh, they've uh, they got a deal where you can put it on the you can put a deal in your drill, your cordless drill, and you can uh, uh, sharpen it right on the lawnmower. But I don't know. I've never been a fan of that. I've never tried one. They might work great, but I don't know anybody that doesn't have a a file in their possession. But actually doing it this way, using a file, you can put a really nice, really nice edge on them. So, anyway, there you go. Bring you back when I start my other projects. So I guess I ought to just continue the just continue with the lawnmower theme. Uh, it's getting that time of year, so I might as well change the oil and service it up. I don't know what's the deal with my camera. Get back there. <laughs> All right. So, let me show you how I uh, change the oil. So I'm going to take the blade off first. Okay, so it's a... Uh, I find something I can hook the, hook the handle under. As you can see, I hooked it under the fridge there. And then there's only one bolt. Oh, all the others were. 9 sixteenths, this one's a 5 eighths. This blade actually feels kind of like it's still sharp. Can't imagine. I'm... That's not bad. But we'll, uh, I'll sharpen it up anyway. And then, uh, Okay. Hope you can see that. Looks like there's some
Got to take this cover off. So some guys like to just tip them upside down and uh, and uh, take the dump the oil out of the filler tube with it upside down. But I don't know. You got gas in it, it makes a big mess. So I usually just pull this cover off. You get down here and you can clean it up. Oh, is there more? Yep. I think there's a couple more. Wasn't very good. Look at that. What a mess. What a mess. a mess. So the oil plugs back there. You guys see that mess? Okay, sounds like, looks like we're going to be one of those guys that turn it upside down. So let me get that set up and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I'm one of those guys that I like to keep a bunch of cardboard around for this very reason. You uh, put a piece of cardboard down, put your oil bucket under there, and then if anything gets on, the cardboard, you can just throw the cardboard away. You don't have a big mess on your cement floor. So I always have cardboard around. Piece underneath the old Ford there. So the oil's draining. And we'll get that drained and refilled. And then we'll uh, be back and install the blade. Okay, so I dumped the oil out. Gas cap leaks a little bit, so now we're going to put some 30 weight in it. Ooh. 
Make it a mess. Okay. So we'll let that uh, sit for a second and uh, give it a chance to get down in the motor. Okay, so it says for correct oil level, do not screw it in. So you set it on top and you pull it off and it says add. So let's add a little bit more oil. Kind of like transmissions, there's a way to do it. So one of the things I've been trying to teach my grandsons is every time before you start one of these, check the oil, make sure it's got oil. Okay, we're just up to the add mark. Looks like I'm going to be out of, it's probably going to take all the oil I've got. Add a little bit at a time. Yeah, a little bit more. Put all I got in there and we'll call it good. One of the first jobs I had as a little kid working with my dad was when he changed the oil on the old Ford here. I don't know if you guys remember the old oil cans that they were round quartz. They didn't have a spout. And the first ones were tin and so you had a, this spout that you'd slide down in there and into the can so that you could pour it into the car. Well as times changed they went from tin to a paper can so you had to be really careful when you slid the spout down to punch the can that you did it straight or you'd crush the can so that was the old cork cans I know you've seen them they look like an old tomato juice you know a V8 can but uh, one of my jobs was is he'd let it drain and then he'd go to the next one and I'd once he did two, I'd drain one into the other. And I'd sit there and hold them until they quit dripping. And then after he did all five quarts, this takes five quarts, I'd give him back that, the fifth one, and he'd pour, well, maybe that much more oil. And that has to be from growing up during the Depression, you know. Nowadays, you dump these in, and I used to. I used to sit and... Uh, drain them into each other and make sure that there was no oil in them but now not so much so i'm probably gonna have to get some oil this holds more than i thought it did let's check it yeah we're right there we'll be good for this one so anyway that was one of my first jobs helping my dad laying out underneath the this old Ford and then he'd start putting the gas in. Oh, the other thing was pumping the grease gun. Uh, we didn't have a pistol grip grease gun. We just had the kind with the big handle. And so he'd hold it on the grease zerk and 
I'd pump the handle and grease the front end of this. It was a two man, well, probably wasn't a two man job, but he let me help. But I don't know if you can see this or not, but see right here, <laughs> has some, hit some pretty severe nick in it. So I'm going to put it on the grinder and see if I can't grind it out. It's, this may be only good for one more season, so I'll grind it and then I'll show you putting it back on. Okay, so I got most of it out, but that blade is so hammered and it's been sharpened so much that I think I'll probably break down and buy a new blade for this one but I'll put it back on and we'll use it uh, we'll use it tomorrow as our mow day and then I'll get a new one for it so the same thing to put it back on you uh, stick it under something to hold it up This has a little centering device. This has a key in it and a little centering device. I don't know if you can see that. This goes like that. Okay. Then you just line it up. Make sure that the little centering device is centered. Yeah, <laughs> that baby's hammered. And then just be careful because you do have a sharp blade under here. Grab the back of the blade. It doesn't have to be super, it needs to be pretty tight, but there you go. That's changing the oil and sharpening the blade. Oh, look at that, I wounded myself. Anyway, she's ready to go. I've already checked the fuel filter, the air filter, and the spark plug earlier. I do that in the spring. So we'll set you up here and see if we can get it to start. So, this has a Kawasaki motor on it. I've had this mower for probably 15 years, and it starts like that every time. What an amazing mower. I keep looking for them, trying to find another one like it, but they've kind of changed the style of them, and you can't get them like this anymore. So what I do in the spring is I mulch my grass in the spring and then when it's in the summertime when you're watering and stuff like that I'll put a side discharge on and I'll just throw the grass out onto the lawn and I don't even catch my grass. I mulch it in the spring, throw it in the winter and then in the fall I uh, put the bag on and use it to pick up the leaves. But if you have a healthy lawn uh, if it's, you're watering it right and you're fertilizing it right, 
you can blow your grass out, your clippings out, and in the morning, you mow it in the afternoon, and in the morning, most of the clippings will be gone. Your grass will consume them in a short period of time. That's why when people thatch their lawns, it don't make sense to me. They're just throwing away good uh, natural fertilizer. If you have too much thatch, then you don't have enough, the right amount of fertilizer, and you don't have the right amount of water. Uh, your lawn shouldn't thatch up if you've got your ratios right. And here in, the, in Utah, you know, we live in a desert, and you drive around the neighborhood and you'll find that guy that has the perfectly green grass. Well, he's watering it every day and throwing lots of fertilizer at it. And I used to be that guy. But uh, what I do now is I, uh, because we live in a desert, I, uh, and my grass looks really, really good in the spring. And when it gets hot, you know, 90s to 100 degree days in the summertime, I don't water every day. I water three times a week and I just keep it alive during the, the hot months. I mean, that's all you can do. I don't fertilize it heavy. And then in the fall, when it starts to cool off, my grass looks great again. But you're just throwing good money, you know, wasting a lot of water trying to have one of those golf course looking lawns in, uh, in a desert. And like I said, I used to be that guy. I used to go out and holler at the kids if they walked on my grass and stuff, but <laughs> I got over that. Now it's, you know, take good care of it, edge it, mow it once a week, whether it needs it or not. Twice a week if you're mulching it, you got to mow it sometimes twice a week if you're mulching it, you know, to make that look good. But, yeah, that's just mean what I do, you know, depends on where you live. I watch this guy on uh, YouTube that lives in upstate New York and they get a lot more rain than we do. And so their grass is always a lot greener, but we don't have that. Like I say, we live in a desert. We have one of the lower rain counts in the nation and so if you try to keep your grass super green you're just wasting money and your time uh, have a great grass great lawn in the spring great grass in the fall and then just keep it alive in the in the summertime anyway that's me tuning up my lawnmower uh, I'll bring you back on these other projects when I get started on them